Hey everybody and welcome to Anna Break, the show that we basically break down the week's hottest topics in anime, manga, and video games. Surprise, surprise, this is episode 70, so I want to thank you guys right off the bat for uh, sticking around with me for about a year and a half, and we'll keep on doing this as um, long as you guys tune in and we'll just have some fun along the way. Um, but let's start off with a video, and it's of a um, series that has already started in the sense that it's an OVA, it's only a four part, it's been shown in Japanese theaters before it's released on DVD and Blu-ray, of course I'm talking about Ghosts in the Shell Arise. Episode 2 is going to be hitting theaters um, very soon in Japan, and the Blu-ray slash DVD should be making its way into stores sometime in December. Um, I hope to be picking up uh, the Blu-ray at least when it comes out December, maybe January depending on how soon Funimation um, brings this out. But you know what? This new trailer is still epic, so enjoy. Can't wait, cannot wait, it looks so good, and I'm really happy to uh, read that this uh, second part of this four-part OVA is going to focus a little more on the hacking aspect. The first one set up the backstory because some people call it an alternate universe, some people call it just a, um, a basic remake. I think it's more of an alternate universe kind of bit, but still great, I'm still enjoying it. It's more ghosts in the show, we all should be happy for that. But like I said, the second one's going to be focused more on uh, some hacking skills, especially of two, um, I guess you can call them former um, friends of Motoko in the past series. We're talking about Ichikawa uh, is going to return and uh, Boma is going to return as well. The Logicoma is getting hacked in some form. That should provide some very interesting action sequences. We'll see what happens. Like I said before, it's going to be in Japanese theaters um, in November, November 30th, as you saw at the end of the trailer. And the following month should be available for DVD and Blu-ray. Funimation themselves have already made the announcement that for each of these releases that are going to be uh, in Japan, the Blu-rays and DVDs will actually have official English subtitles. So... They are going to bring over a limited amount of these imported um, Blu-rays and DVDs to sell over here in the States. I picked up the first one the day it was available, and I'll probably do the exact same thing for this one as well. Um, let's move on to another video, another trailer for something that's coming out. Sadly, this one's only coming out in Japan. There's currently no word that this is going to make it stateside, and uh, given the fact that the gameplay for... Um, what this movie is based on, it was so crazy. I kind of want to see what happens when you throw it to an anime production company. This is the brand new trailer for Bayonetta Bloody Fate. You have to appreciate the amount of detail that Studio Gonzo can put into an anime title, especially when it's a one off like this, which is a standalone um, anime adaptation for a movie. Um, it's going to be shown. Only for 10 days in Japan, starting on the 23rd of November. Um, again, no word yet if it's going to be available anytime in the future um, uh, stateside. Now, for those of you who haven't played Bayonetta yet, you should pick it up. The first one is currently available. You can buy it used at any number of game stores. And the sequel is actually only available um, when it's finally released for the Nintendo Wii U. So unless you have one of those consoles... I kind of still recommend picking up a console anyways, because they may not have all the AAA titles, but the titles they do get are still a hell of a lot of fun to play, especially when you have friends over. Uh, still looks good. Anyways, moving on to something that just hurts my head. I'm just going to showcase this uh, this little picture right now. This What we're going to talk about is a new anime based on the Avengers. This is actually going to be created by Toei. Um, part and partial working with Disney on this, but Toei kind of has uh, a lot of say in how this is going to go. And it hurts my head. So, this is going to be Avengers Disc Wars. Uh, it's going to be a technology developed to imprison digitized supervillains, which is explo uh, exploited by Loki to trap the heroes. With the help of Spider-Man, a group of kids you can see in the background attempt to thwart this by traveling the world, searching for discs and summoning the Avengers for aid. They turned one of the most badass superhero groups in all of comic history into Pokemon. Why? <laughs> I... Uh, 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 
Why? Now, I, I, I will say this. Marvel has teamed up with other companies in Japan, mainly Madhouse, uh, recently, to create a number of anime titles based on some of their um, past characters. You have one for Blade, you have um, one for X-Men, I believe, and they were decent. I mean, they were only about 12 episodes long. The Iron Man one, I think it was 13, if I'm not mistaken. It was all right. But again, because it's going with Toei on this, and it Obviously, they're going to go for the whole marketing aspect. The fact you can collect all of them. Uh, it's Pokemon, but Disney slash Marvel style. Uh, yeah. Now, this is one series that I'm really hoping never makes its way stateside. And given the fact that Disney is involved with it, it'll show up next year on Disney XD. I I'm quite sure. Um, yeah. Way to go. Disney. You know, there were some good ideas possibly with Disney taking over Star Wars. The There are some good things with Disney taking over Marvel. This is not one of them. I'm just going to say that right now. Uh, before I have an aneurysm, let me move on to some really cool news about a manga series that I absolutely love and adore, but it just ended in the sense that the company that was bringing it stateside just ceased to be. So we never got a continuation of this series. And it's called Eden. It's an Endless World. An absolutely incredible series. Uh, very deep, very dark, very messed up, but enjoyable nonetheless. Um, the problem is Dark Horse. Come on, Dark Horse. The last time we re re uh, released one of these volumes was back in 2011. Give me more. And they're finally bringing more. So, volume 14 is actually going to be coming out next March. And to kind of make up for the, uh, the major gap, this volume is 232 pages long. Uh, cannot wait. The battle sequences are absolutely jaw-dropping. Um, there is some sci-fi bits here and there in terms of who's an android, who's not, what parts of these characters are... Um, robotic and which ones are organic kind of changes up here and there and it's completely unique so I think you guys would definitely enjoy it if you can find volumes 1 through 13 of Eden It's an Endless World 1 I would congratulate you because it's extremely rare um, but if you can pick it up you will not be disappointed I promise you that uh, also on a side note looks like um, Dark, Horse, Dark Horse is actually going to re-release um, the next volume of the new manga by um, Kota Hirano of Helsing fame. The next volume of Drifters is also going to be coming out, looks like next March on the 12th. This one's a little over 200 pages as well. Um, the idea behind this one, it's heroes from Earth's history called Drifters battle to determine the future of an enchanted world facing the onslaught of the Dark Lord and his own Earth warriors. Okay, so you take the creator of Helsing, throw him some historical uh, figures, and have him just let him go at it. That's exactly what you're going to get with this. I'm kind of curious about this. This is going to be Volume 3 coming out in March, so Volume 1 and 2 are available right now. Kind of want to check this one out too. So get some manga news in there for you. I mean, <laughs> as it is right now. I, I need more of uh, of Attack on Titan. I only have Volumes 1 and 2, and they're on, what, Volume, like, 9 or something like that right now? I need to jump on that ASAP. Okay. You know it's an episode of Anna Break if I'm going to talk about Vocaloid in one way or another. Kind of like when you watch From a Mother's Basement, we have to have um, an obligatory Disney news article. Well, here's our obligatory Vocaloid article. And this is actually coming from Yamaha. And they are going to help make songwriting with Vocaloids easier. Kind of a unique idea. This thing, this program they're, they're going to be uh, creating is called the Vocaloducer. The idea with this, it's a, um, a SaaS program, basically. Um, software as a service. This is a program that you only download partially on your computer, but the majority of it is on Yamaha's servers. You never have a f uh, the full access to it. Partially so you can utilize the power of their servers, partially so they can uh, make sure people are paying for it. So you got to take one with the other. 
So what Vocal Oducer does, it allows you, um, you know, create user-produced lyrics, add a computer-generated melody, and using this uh, algorithm unique to Yamaha, goes on their servers, throws it all in there, lets it do its thing, and you can download a song out of it, a completely unique song. Um, I, isn't that what you can do already with the current program? <laughs> Is this something different? Um, I think the way people are looking at this is there are rumors of the fact that you can hum into a microphone and connect to your computer the melody that you want. So even if you can't compose, you know, playing the piano or use the program itself, if you hum uh, into it, it should be allow you to download what you hummed into the computer back with the l lyrics that you actually entered. I could be wrong about that. There's just been rumors about that part. But I don't know. I look at this going, okay, Yamaha, I understand you're still kind of miffed about Krypton taking all the glory for Vocaloid. Could this be helpful to some people? Yes. I mean, they say that the program could produce roughly 18,000 different melodies based on different combinations of templates, which are rhythm patterns, pitch variation, and chord progression. So essentially, if you are completely tone deaf, you can use this software as a service, um, just pick and choose whatever sounds good to you, and it'll create a song for you. Okay. This is still in early beta, it's not even open beta yet. Um, I'll give it a shot when it comes out in open beta. Right now, it's only available uh, with the Japanese vocals, although they do plan on providing support for both English and Chinese lyrics in the future. <sighs> to me, as a musician, I, I don't see usefulness in this. To those who are less musically inclined, I could definitely see that. Uh, I can write music left, right, and center, no problem. My only problem when writing music is I'm horrible at writing lyrics. Um, yeah, we'll just leave that at, at that. So, yeah, so Yamaha, okay, you have a new Vocaloid program. We'll see if it's helpful. All right. This next article is something that just confuses me. I never thought I would hear these two words together in the same sentence. One is Gunpla. The other one, Vogue, as in U.S. Vogue magazine. Apparently, in the latest uh, issue of Vogue magazine, there was actually a couple photo shoots that utilized Gunpla, basically Gundam models. <laughs> this is all in the November 2013 issue of Vogue magazine. Um, these are about 160th scale. And before you're thinking, oh, this is uh, just CG modeled onto it. No, there's actually pictures behind the scenes of these models. These are actually models that people brought there people built them some were actually they claim were custom painted just for these photo shoots and they were brought uh brought to the set uh, where they were shooting um apparently you know sunrise actually gave the, the green light for this one so yeah <laughs> i mean you have on one picture you have unicorn gundam the other one you have gundam astray red frame from gundam seed um Cool? I mean, is Gundam now fashionable? Sure. Uh, I'll go for it. Why not? <laughs> so, yeah, anybody who actually picks up yeah, or actually reads Vogue magazine, I know someone who does. Um, I may have to check their latest uh, issue just to see this for myself. <laughs> All right, for those of you in the Southern California area, specifically in the Los Angeles area, I have something for you to go to, especially in about six days from now. So a group called Babel Entertainment and the Japanese Animation Club at UCLA will actually host a guest panel that you want to go to, starring none other than Nobu Uematsu, the composer of most of the Final Fantasy games. He left uh, a few years ago, but all the classic titles, he's the composer of it. You also might rec remember him from um, Black Mages, the band he put together to create a rock spin of some of his classic Final Fantasy themes. That band is no longer together for the sole fact that when he left Square Enix, um, he 
kind of couldn't bring the band with him. So he decided to create a new band called Earthbound Papas. I have their first album. It's absolutely amazing. So during this guest panel, Uimatsu himself will be there with all of Earthbound Papas um, on Tuesday, October 29th. And you can actually purchase the band's brand new CD at the event. Uh, yeah, um, you guys should go to this. I'm going to try to go to this. It is at the UCLA Moore Hall, uh, uh, Hall 100, from 5.30 p.m. to 9 p.m. Apparently, the game orchestra and choir of UCLA will be there to provide some background music. Um, you can There will be a Q&A with Uematsu, so you can ask all your favorite questions, all the questions you ever wanted to find out how we decided to create um, Genova's theme. Uh, and any ideas you have, you can probably ask him in this Q and a session. Um, yeah, it's coming up real soon. You guys need to check this out. And as far as I can tell, this is, um, yeah, it looks like a, uh, a free event. So you guys should just show up there, get parking, go to UCLA Moore hall and yeah, go check it out. Moving on to some other news about LA events. So, every year, the AFI likes to um, host a, um, a film festival. And given the fact that AFI is American Film Institute, of course they're going to host film festivals. This year in LA, it's going to be uh, held, uh, it's called November 8th and 9th, in a few weeks from now. And it's a slew of assorted titles. Some are cool, some I've never heard of before. Well, most of them I've never heard of before. But there is one there that I think you guys will probably recognize. Hayao Miyazaki's late, uh, latest and last um, animated motion picture, The Wind Rises. They are going to showcase this um, uh, actually a couple times, what it looks like right now. This has been shown at a few film festivals all over the country so far, but if you're in the LA area, this is your chance to go check this one out because the way the AFI Film Festival works is that if you are a member, you can sign up to get tickets. But starting on October 30th, tickets go out to general public. And may I mention, they are free. So, um, I'm sure um, a few of them will be picked up by AFI uh, members. But if you are not an AFI member like me and you want to go see this movie for free, you will have a chance starting October 30th. You want to hit up AFI's uh, Film Festival website. You can do a search for it. And... Look to get uh, to reserve your own ticket for Hayao Miyazaki's The Wind Rises. I hope to see you guys there. And, you know, let's talk about some gaming news. And um, let's talk about of something that we really haven't talked about on this show. Uh, Otome games are essentially um, games like simulation games, dating games that are aimed at women. Because I know we have some female audience as well. There is a new game actually going to be released stateside eventually on PS3 by uh, Axis, a.k.a. SYS uh, Systems. They are going to release the Hakuoki games. They're going to bring another entry of this series over to the United States, this time for the PlayStation 3. The full title is going to be uh, Hakuoki Stories of the Shinsengumi. Now, we don't have an exact date for when this comes out. Now, essentially, this is, uh, I guess, dating simulator is probably the best way to look at it. But usually when you talk about these on these shows, or in general, it's usually male protagonists and a, a bevy of women. Flip that around. So now you have a number of, of women, or number of men, I should say, who are trying to um, win the heart of a young woman named Chizuru, who finds herself fighting alongside uh, the infinite Shinsengumi in the midst of war between competing factions. Because this is a game and it's from Japan, you got to know that love is in the air. So who knows what's going to happen with this? Um, but all we know is that Axis is bringing this stateside for PS3. The only downside to this being we don't have an actual release date yet or an idea of a release date. All they state is it's coming soon. So I'm sure there are a few fans out there who will be looking forward to that. Uh, sticking with the video game news, Nintendo, Nintendo, Nintendo. You have been teasing me with the Nintendo 3DS ever since I played a demo unit at E3 a couple years ago. And for one reason or another, I have yet to pick one up. 
Then you release the 3DS XL. Bigger screen. Okay, I really should pick one up. Now Nintendo's going, you know what? That's not enough. I know we have a couple exclusive um, color schemes for, most recently, the Pokemon games X and Y. You know what? Why don't we throw a couple other uh, schemes out there? How about orange and teal? Now, at first when I read this, I thought, orange and teal? Are you kind of running out of the spectrum? But then I took a look at this, and I, I saw the orange one and went, oh, I do want. Definitely want. Unfortunately... This is only limited to Japan. They go on sale November 28th, and they retail for 19,900 yen, um, about 200 to 205 dollars US. Now, there are times where exclusive colors that Nintendo released in Japan make its way stateside, but it's it's always hit and miss on that. I really hoping they bring the orange one over, but if that one is not enough, it's already been teased in a, a leaked Black Friday ad for GameStop. But there's a limited Legend of Zelda one that's going to come out this holiday season. And this one... Uh, it's... Come on. When you have the Triforce on the cover, kind of want that. <laughs> now, the deal is that in the leaked ad is that you will get the uh, bundle with the new Legend of Zelda A Link Between Worlds um, this Black Friday. It's going to go for probably about $220. Uh, those in people in Europe and Japan can actually pre-order these right now, and they have a number of other options for those areas as well. But honestly, if I had to pick one out of three, I'd have to go with that orange one because that just, it looks nice. That's, that's just me, though. Okay. Um, I'm going to show a quick video right now of um, a certain game that's making its way back stateside. And this is a game that I'm looking forward to because I loved playing um, any game from this franchise. And the fact this one's coming to the PlayStation 3 next February, kind of want it now. This is a high definition remaster of the original Tales of Symphonia that came out, I think 2003, 2004 on PlayStation 2 initially. Um, I played it on the um, the GameCube when it came out later on. Tons of fun, absolute blast. And the fact that this one is going to be a mix of both Tales of Symphonia and the expansion, which was Tales of Symphonia Dawn of a New World, plus uh, new illustrations, new outfits, a bunch of bonus stuff, and it has already been confirmed it will include both English and Japanese audio tracks. So you can actually pick and choose between the two, whichever one you enjoy. Uh, you can go through with that. It'll be hitting the PlayStation 3 in the U.S. on February 25th of 2014. Little ways to go, but you know what? That's just enough time for one, to save up, and two, for you to get through all the games and, and toys and whatnot that you may or may not receive during the holiday season. That's one way of looking at it. <laughs> to tithe you over until this one comes out. <laughs> okay. Time to get a little nostalgic here real quick. Anybody who has ever played um, Pokemon may remember this one scene where there was a certain glitch in a certain area. If you, if you did a number of certain steps, you picked up uh, the ability to capture um, missing no or missing number. Um, if you ever used this Pokemon and it actually corrupted your game save... <laughs> I was very pissed when I found this out the hard way. <laughs> well, it seems to be all the rage right now that um, Pokemon X and Y have recently come out for the Nintendo 3DS or 2DS, depending on which one you have. Um, and it seems like if you go in um, Lumino City, if you stand in front of a certain boutique, you may ca catch a glimpse of something that kind of looks like Missing No. <laughs> So, here's the thing. A lot of uh, gaming websites have already reached out to Nintendo saying, is this homage or is this actually Missy No? Can you actually capture Missy No? Or, <laughs> or whatnot. And, of course, N Nintendo will not comment one way or the other. But, honestly, that's going to be kind of cool. I mean, like I said, I haven't played a Pokemon game all the way through since the original Red, Blue, Yellow days. 
So um, I eventually want to pick up a 3DS. I will have to um, pick up either X or Y and uh, see if I can find this for myself. Now, unfortunately right now, Nintendo has already made the announcement they're going to be releasing a patch very soon to um, deal with a corrupted save um, glitch that's going on in the uh, games at this point. Who knows if this will still be around after said patch. I'm just really hoping it does because, honestly, this is a really cool Easter egg, especially for those who were playing the game back in the day. Kind of a nice little bit that I came across online. <sighs> now you guys are and talking more about it. Now I need to pick one of these up and start playing. Got to have money first for that, so it's got to take a, a little bit of time before I start playing that. All right. couple bits of figure news before we wrap this episode up. Anybody who has been uh, catching up with Miss Monochrome, the very short but very hilarious anime series um, starring uh, <laughs> a very confused android at times, she mentioned in the latest episode, episode four, um, these episodes are only like five minutes long and they're really enjoyable, she <sighs> had, comes across a revelation that Vendroids, which are mentioned in... Uh, by name in this episode are um, homages to androids and because she's an android and she wants to become an, uh, a pop idol it is inevitable that she'll be made into a an android as well well in one scene she's actually looking um, at a number of androids in the store window and she decides to make uh, make herself into an android in terms of like a, like a Miku Dayo where she's really you know uh, Take a Miku Dayo and put her into life size so she's overblown everything. Now make that into a style of Miss Monochrome. She does that in the episode, and, um, and of course at the end of the episode, it gets turned into a Nendroid. Sad to say, the Nendroid itself took off in popularity, but uh, Miss Monochrome herself did not. Now, this episode only came out just a few days ago, but... Out of the blue, Good Smile Company comes out and makes the announcement they are actually going to, in reality, turn Miss Monochrome into an android. <laughs> so I'm hoping it'll probably look like, you know, the little bit um, from the anime. And that'll be just cute. I, I may pick one up and, you know, when it comes out. Given the fact they just announced this, there's a good chance it'll be four, five months before they even start pre-orders and I'll be happy with that so I'll be able to save up for a time being I thought it was kind of cute if you guys have not checked out Miss Monochrome it is currently streaming on Crunchable go check it out four episodes are out so far and they're five minutes each you, you guys can catch up in less time than it takes to watch an episode of anything else <laughs> and the last bit for those of you who are big fans of Attack on Titan and I know a lot of you are myself included there have been a number of great pieces of merchandise that you can actually pick up, pre-order, throw on your wall, throw on your shelf, and just enjoy. But Mediacom, I think, has the most impressive um, collectible by far. They uh, released pictures, and they're going to start pre-orders tomorrow for a one-sixth scale uh, Mikasa. Let me put it this way. Let me just show this one picture. So, highly detailed. Looks nice. But this is actually part of their real Action Heroes lineup, which means these this model is going to be a foot tall. Just shy of a foot tall. Um, she comes with a number of accessories, including the maneuvering gear, um, of course, her swords, um, her jacket, which is all cloth, by the way. So... And she also comes with a number of different hairstyles, a number of different facial expressions. So you can actually pose her as much as you like into whatever you like. It, it looks absolutely insane. I mean, look at the detail. Uh, I want one. want one so bad. The only downside, though, is this, like every other real action hero uh, figure, is very expensive. Pre-orders start, like I said, tomorrow... And uh, the suggested retail price is 23,600 yen. We're looking just shy of 250 bucks US, not including shipping. Uh, it does have a estimated release, release date of July 2014, but 
there are some figures that you can wait for the pre-orders to just before it comes out to order. And then there's ones like this where I'm quite sure within a very short time frame, it will be sold out. And if you actually want to pick one up after that, <sighs> break out the pocketbook because it's going to be, I would not be surprised if I saw it for twice the price. <laughs> so, but I think that's going to be it for this episode. I want to thank you guys so much for hanging out. Maybe make sure to stick around for post show. You can catch this at, um, the show every single Wednesday at seven o'clock Pacific. Uh, you can also catch on every Sunday at 5 PM Pacific. You can join me and my good friend, Michael Underwood as we rant about who knows what, but it's definitely everything geek. You can check that out on from the mother's basement at 5 PM. Um, that's me for this episode. Thank you guys so much for hanging out and for a break. I'm Jason. I'll see you guys next week. Take it easy, everybody. It's, 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 it's,